It's important that we be taken through certain important statements in the Word of God on how we can be super successful, how we can attain to God's goal for our lives, how we can be filled with all of the fullness of God. The Lord said to me, there are three kinds of people in the family of God that we always prosper. He said, number one, those that fear God. Number two, the faithful. Number three, those that honor his word. Three kinds of people that will always prosper in the family of God. So which of these are you? You know, in, in pursuing fullness, in desiring to become who God has made you and who God wants you, that is fundamentally something we must have and if that thing is missing in our lives no matter how much we try to attain to fullness it will always remain an elusive concept for us so you want to know what that is really it is giving preciousness to the word of god treating the word of god as the most precious thing in your life it shouldn't be that because we heard it before we should therefore abandon it for something new. no no there's so much blessing in that message we have not we have not gleaned yet. So much blessing in that message we haven't taken yet. Like Paul talked about the fullness of the blessing. So I want us to have the listening again on that very word. And I tell you something: as we listen again, the Bible tells us once has he spoken and twice have we heard it. So let's go hear it the second time because of the benefits of giving special meditation to the Word of God. My preparation for the program, personal input is zero percent. <laughs> God input is hundred percent, because all I have to tell you is um, will just be things that were dictated for me. I mean, I'm in bed and just in bed thinking of general stuff, and then the Spirit of God speaks and say, "Get your pen and let me talk to you." And then He says, "This program." shall be centered on three things only. I'm telling you, this program shall be centered on three things only. Hallelujah. Okay, I can see you're ready for it. <laughs> Woo, glory. But, but you know, it's beautiful to know that we're just starting from the beginning. Now, the three things are the makeup of experiencing God. Alright? The three things are the makeup of the emphasis experiencing God. Because I suppose that's what you, you, you had on the screen some moment ago. It must have been on the screen for you. Experiencing God. Glory to God. Oh boy. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh boy. And you see, you, you know why this is so interesting for me, why I'm, I am I'm confident of what will happen to you? The Lord began detecting, if, if, if you were close to this, you would have seen that, you know this would be wrong, because this is not my meeting notepad, this is a handy notepad. It was close to the bed when the Lord said, now start writing. It's so beautiful to know that the Lord detects for you to write. And with God, he says, I have not said to the siege of Jacob, seek me in vain. We God detect a meeting for you, a program for you, for no reason. No, no, no. If he gathers a people, he empties himself on them. When God gathers a people, it's so he can empty himself into them. So we have been gathered of God to be filled of God. Glory to God. The fullness of God. A man can be full of God. These are, these are concepts that are not accepted everywhere. You can be full of God. No, I'm telling you. Experiencing God. I said a man can be full of... Listen, have you ever heard where um, in the Bible it tells us um, the man was full of leprosy? A man was full of leprosy. Another thing it tells us the man was fully possessed of devils. Where over 12,000 demons were in one man. The, the, the madman of gathering had over 12,000 demons. I'm telling you. 
a crowd of demons. Jesus said, what's your name? He said, for my name is Legion. Many, many, many. They say Legion is about 12,000. One man had 12,000 demons. You say, how could he contain them? That is mind, tiny spirits. Spirits. 12,000. Sometimes here, seven demons were cast out. Demons. They don't need so much space, just need a little space. I've cast out a lot of them, so I know what I'm talking about. They can be small, they can be massive, depends. Demons. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. But think for a moment the kind of being you will become if you are full of God. No, think about that. I have meditated it for so long. What it means to be full of God. And then what kind of person you become. What type of life you'll be having if you become full of God. Does God want us to be full of him? Absolutely. He, he didn't give us the Holy Spirit so that we can experience a part of God. No. Oh. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said, tell him I will come. That's a visitation. He said, Moses, tell Israelites, I will pass through Egypt tonight. God is in the camp. He, he said, what would you want? I said, Lord, that every pole, everything may be anointed of your presence. We ask for the electrifying presence of God. We said, Lord, inherit this program. Make it your own. People will hear, they will see their superior presence. There is the ordinary presence and there is the superior presence of God. What God wants for you, God wants you to carry the superior presence of God. You can have that and be, and be talking about cancer, like pneumonia, pie, ulcer, di diabetics. They don't stay. No, those things don't. They, you, you can't. God does not share habitation with diseases. You have to get that. God does not share habitation with diseases. You can't be full of God and be sick. Though the body be dead because of sin. He said, yeah, the spirit is made alive because of righteousness. And then he says, but there's hope for your body. For if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. Have you noticed when they refer to people that once lived, however great they were, who we say late apostle, late this. Have you, have you noticed even the natural man don't address Jesus as late Jesus? <laughs> because it is, it, is, it is very clear, Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He is not late. Why? Because death could not hold him. He said, I live that you may live. Jesus is alive. He's alive. Nobody disputes that. No faith disputes that. No religion disputes that. Jesus is alive. So you can experience the heavenly life on earth. Have you started experiencing that life? Jesus is alive so you can experience the heavenly life here on earth. People don't know these things. We need to move away from this whole cloud of atmosphere and begin to talk realities of, of the kingdom. Are you still here? Let nothing distract you. Let no one distract you. Be prepared for this meeting. It is experiencing God. You say, okay, what does isotropy, what does it have to do with, with a spiritual life? It's that you can become a child of God who is pressed on every side, but you don't quit your faith. Isotropy is, is having same orientation on every side. So you can have same orientation with God in every circumstance. So it's, 
it's a lot, but let's not be ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All of the terms will be defined explicitly in the course of the meeting. First, let's stay with the beginning. So this program is centered on three thoughts, right? And I said the three thoughts are the makeup of experiencing God. Are you there? Number one, realms of knowledge in bracket of God. Number one, realms of knowledge. Then bracket open of God because there are different um, there are different types of knowledge. But knowledge of God. Okay. So number one is realms of knowledge bracket open of God bracket close. All right. So you know that is knowledge of God. We are talking about the, the realms of, of course the, the realms of knowledge apply to everything that, that, that exists to be known. But God is our focus. Because there's also knowledge of the truth. There's knowledge of the Son of God and all of that. So we'll get to that. Number two is understanding the kingdom of God. Understanding the kingdom of God. Ha ha ha. Are you there? Number three, you will like this. Understanding the children of the kingdom. Understanding the children of the kingdom. The children of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Did you get that? Let me say this to you. I, I may be a bit ahead of myself, but you have to hear this. There are people, just listen, who are believing God for miracles and great things and whatever it is they are believing God for. I know there are people who say they believe God for a good barrier. <laughs> Okay, people believe in God for different things. But you see, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to, to please God, right? But you have to understand this. Faith is impossible with general knowledge of God. Faith, it's absolutely impossible with the general knowledge of God. Do you understand that? Listen, if you are expecting miracles based on, or based on the story of God you were told, you're wasting time. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You will soon find it. I'm too excited about this program. You know why? Because I was too taught for it. <laughs> you know, do you understand that? I was too taught for it. My God. And you know, I'm, being, I'm taking lectures, <laughs> taking classes, and I'm just noting. Glory to God. And you know, the apostles say, Can God talk to me like that? Did you not read God dictated for Moses to write? It does. I know God very well. Jesus said, if I should say I do not know God, I have become a liar like you. No, I know God very well. I know him very well. Hallelujah. Days ago, I was talking to the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm not enjoying some some conversation pattern. What's going on? I'm not, I'm not, the way I, I'm not saying things like I want to say, I'm not hearing you. What's going on? He said, the problem is this. He said, you have always enjoyed a relationship with me that Satan can interfere with. There is a relationship with God Satan can interfere with. That's where I'm taking you to. For example, okay, 
Maybe you write it. <laughs> write it so that I can start this meeting. Because I want to start the meeting proper. He said, you have enjoyed a relationship with me that Satan can interfere with. But there's a relationship with me that Satan cannot interfere with. Do you understand that? For example, listen, for example, there are people who depend on the leading of God based on dreams and visions. All right? They, 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 their confidence in their work with God is always based on visions and dreams. He says, um, please don't start that business because I've not dreamt about it. <laughs> because God always shows me things in dreams and visions. What they don't know is that Satan can counter visions and dreams. So there are false dreams and false visions. Do you understand that? So Satan can, can bring a dream, a vision to terrify you. Some time ago, someone sent a message there. She had a vision that we have a meeting and something happened to me. I said, oh, Satan, don't try it again. Imagine someone says, I had the vision, Reverend passed. For example, Reverend, we had the program, Reverend now passed. Passed to where? Passed to where? Like, like death, me. It's not possible now. No, no, no. I need to make that clear to you. If the devil is telling that I will soon die, until I'm past 100 years, and you have to understand, I'm not dying. I have been promised something that I can't tell you guys here. I am in my hotel room two days ago. I was in prayer for hours with the Lord. And the Lord appeared to me, and before my eyes was written, Elijah. In a glittering, in a glittering manner, it, I was in bed meditating. I, till about, I was in prayer till about 5 a.m. And I saw body written in glittering from Elijah. I knew what God was talking about. So that vision was Satan. Let me tell you what the vision was for whoever had that vision. It was Satan coming to trouble your confidence for tomorrow. Because they are those feel like my assault, reverence, my father, my future is bright. Satan came to, have, to attack your confidence. Do you understand that? That's what he came to do. And I rebuked him not to try it again. So, he passed away. <laughs> no, it's not possible. It's not a joke. It's, there are things that are not possible. Uh, so, that one is on one side. <laughs> but so, you see, the dreams, Satan could, 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 could come and, uh, you know, interfere with your dreams and your dad. Then, there are those who, who believe or who depend on their hearing all right he said i've not heard from god so we can't act until i hear from god satan can also speak to you of course he does satan can come and say my son it is well he is not scared every time you hear my son it's not god because the bible says there are many voices as it were and there's none without significance Satan can call you. He, once he knows that you always trust my son, go ahead. He will start calling you my son. <laughs> you don't know the devil. If he could call Jesus to worship, what is that? Satan came to Jesus and asked Messiah to bow down to him. If he could do that, is it you can't call my son? <laughs> um, so every my son is not God. And so Satan can interfere with that realm of relationship. The realm of hearing. But this what Satan cannot interfere with. So the first one is seeing, right? Which is dreams and visions. Because you don't hear dreams, you see dreams, right? So the first one is the realm of seeing. Alright? The next one I mentioned is hearing. Is that correct? But it's the third realm of relationship that Satan can interfere with. It's called the realm of knowing. Where you know in your spirit. You didn't hear, you didn't see, but you just knew. The natural man calls it instinct or God feeling. But it's not, it's not, it's none of those. It's a knowing, it's called knowing. It's a realm of knowing. That's the realm wisdom is at its best. The realm of knowing. You just know in your spirit. Traveling is right. You just they ask you how do you say, I just know. I felt it on the inside. You didn't hear, you didn't see, but you felt it. It clicks with your spirit. It's a realm of knowing. It says, for God has given us his spirit that we may freely know. You see that? Not hear or see. That we may know. And then as much as are led by that spirit. Do you understand that? Did you get it? Okay. You are not ready here because I, I, you know, there are those of you who are programmed 
themselves for the, the, the usual pattern. Reverend will first make us pray. We will shout. We have not shouted, so I can't write. <laughs> we have not shouted enough. And then, okay, if we have shouted small, we, haven't lifted, we have not lifted our holy hands, so I can't do anything. So I'll write when we will start. We have started. <laughs> I'm teaching already. And for your information, the Lord is telling me that these things I'm teaching you, after some time, I must take a break to allow you guys stretch the messages until you can use them in practical sense. Because God is focusing on practical truth. Not theoretical truth. Practical truth. Practical truth. Truth is meant to be practical, not theory. Truth is to be practical, not theoretical. Empirical, not hypothetical. Empirical, not hypothetical. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Are you here? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So if you have been always depending on my son, <laughs> many of those my son out of the ten may have been of the devil. He said, but the Lord said my son, and I did it, and he flopped. Yeah. He flopped. Did you, oh boy, oh boy, Lord, don't let me start. Did you read the Bible that the voice of God sounded like that of Eli? God called Samuel, he went to Eli because the voice sounded alike. He took Eli to tell him, I've, I've not called you. Wait not for Eli. Just suppose Eli was a devil. But I said, my son, I called you. <laughs> so, do, do you understand that? If you came here just to receive a miracle and go, you missed the mark. You missed the point. The point of the whole program. You didn't just come to get a miracle. Yes, you will get. You came here to be transfigured of God. You've got to be a better version of yourself. So, this program is not just about receiving miracles. It's also about transfiguration. Becoming more and more like God. Starting with becoming like Jesus. <laughs> That's what we are here for. Because it's possible. Did you read the Bible? It says man is the glory of God. Man is the glory of God. And many don't even know what that means. If the glory of God was really about cloud, then this man is the cloud of God. It's not cloud. Every time we mention glory, People just, all, all they see in their imagination is a cloud with some smoke descending. And everybody is free, like it says, the temple is filled with cloud, the smoke, and all of that. So they, they expect that when we talk about glory in the New Testament, you will have to see, I haven't seen cloud. What they saw in the Old Testament was a shadow of the glory of God. That wasn't the glory of God in itself. It tells you the Old Testament is the of the real thing. Hallelujah. Man is the glory of God. This is smoke is the glory of God. Cloud is the glory of God. No. And as you study your Bible, you find that the, the cloud was more, was more of a, what, what, what precedes the glory, what came before the glory. It says, and the house was filled with the cloud of God, and the glory of God filled the house. So the cloud and the glory are not the same thing. Hallelujah. Amen. So man is the glory of God. You say, I'm the glory of God. I am the glory of God. Now listen, you know, when we say, say, say these things, as some of you feel like, um, it's, it doesn't even mean anything. What? You know, 
the power of words. You don't know the power of spoken words. Read your Bible. It says you are condemned by the words. You are condemned by thy words. It didn't say you are condemned by devils. Your deliverance is in your mouth. Your victory is in your mouth. Many of you are not using your mouth right. You say the wrong things and will never say the right thing. No. He says, for thou art condemned by the words of your mouth and thou art justified by the words of the mouth. Solomon, Solomon com uh, communicated it better. He said, thou art snared. That's important. Shouldn't just run past that. Hallelujah. Are you here? I shouldn't run past that. It's important. Jehovah, we praise you. Jehovah, we praise you. We praise your name. begin to call on Jehovah right now because Jehovah Rafa is in car. Jehovah we praise you. How many of you want to see his third tonight? to scriptures we have to lift up our hands this way he says let us lift up our hearts and our hands unto God so it's Jehovah you cannot you don't do like this hands no hand except the one is amputated otherwise it's lifting of holy hands he says we should lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting don't doubt it Jehovah we pray just look at me and do the same. Lift your hands towards heaven now. Jehovah, come on, choir. We pray. Oh God.
and hold on to them. You know, God says, I will honor those that honor me, right? First Samuel 2.30. Now, just imagine, every now and then you're worshiping the Lord, your hands are up. Will those hands ever fail? You find that whatever you touch with those hands will always prosper. You can't say one worship. Even when you're not paralyzed, you lift your hands towards heaven and worship. You see what? Listen. Listen. Romans 15 4 tells us that whatever was written before now was written for our learning. So it was written for us to learn how to worship God. Because I, I find that in many churches, people don't know how to worship. They say worship God, that's when the elders and the so-called rich start pressing their phones. For whatsoever things we're written at fourth time, we're written for our learning, all right? For our learning that we're told was how to worship God, all right? How to worship, we said, let us lift up our hearts and our hands unto God. Do you understand that? Then Paul said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. I will therefore that men pray everywhere. First Timothy chapter 2, let's read that. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 8. Look at First Timothy chapter 2 verse 8. 1, 2, 3. You see that lifting up holy hands or putting hands in pocket. Listen, you can't serve God any other way from what scripture recommends. You can't serve God any other way other than the way the scripture has recommended it for us. There's the scriptural recommendation on how to serve God. It's prescription of service. Scriptural prescription of service. How to serve God. Lifting of holy hands. Without wrath and doubt. That means, what do you mean by without wrath and doubt? Meaning, without arguing with the usher and the man who is lift your hands. Because there are people you say, lift your hands and they get wrathful, angry. You are disturbing my worship. You are not worshiping. You are not worshiping. Because there is the ideal way to serve God. It's called the prescribed order. There is the prescribed order of service. If you're not following it, we know it here. So we come and say, hey, that's not the way to serve. That's not the way to do it. Just like Eli told someone how to respond to God. How, just where God taught Moses how to relate with the supernatural. We, you see, we must be trained on how to serve God. Do you get that? We must be trained on how to serve God. Why? It's not a familiar way of life for you. I've never been there before. Not like you were born a Christian all your life, or born, you, you always knew this. No, you didn't always know them. So if you didn't always know them, then you are an apprentice in these things. The apprentice must be taught. So why does the apprentice argue? They say, loosen, but say, I want to tie the boat. No, loosen the boat. The apprentice must learn in silence. Must be willing to learn. There are a number of you come to church and are not willing to learn. And you wonder why your life is the same way. Because you don't prosper in disobedience as long as you're a child of God. No. You don't prosper in disobedience. You don't prosper in disobedience. It's only in church, in the body of Christ, you find people wanting to do it their way. Go, to, go, go see Muslims how they do it. No Muslim will come to the mosque and say he wants to pray the, his own way. He's not born. A disciplined lifestyle. They say they are fasting in the month of Ramadan. They fast. Mm -mm. It's only in church. Someone will say, must I fast? Discipline. Discipline. That's why they call them faithful, faithful Muslims. They are fasting. They go. They say it's time to pray. They, they go to pray. You go to mom and the, the, the imam is talking and you are talking, you'll be dead. So in church, someone will start in pastor, wrap up, time up, time up. <laughs> Not here, of course, if you try it here, you die. <laughs> I'm talking about in other places. I'm telling you. Pastor, I have an appointment with the, with the MD of my company, wrap up. Why? Because he's the highest giver of the church. No, there are people like that. When you become disobedient in the house of God, you open the door to Satan in your life. When you become disobedient in the house of God, 
you open the door to Satan in your life. Yet God says, and give no place to the devil. Meaning it's in your hand to decide if Satan will have access in your life or not. People give place to the devil in their lives. Disobedience is one of the ways to do it. Disobedience. The, the, what, the, the, the portion we just read, what, what did he say? Pray, I wait for that man pray everywhere. Men pray everywhere. Don't you see Muslims carry march everywhere? How many of you Christians pray at work? I went to a place some time ago, some years back, many years ago. I wanted to buy a car many years ago. No, I didn't. Okay, let me put it right. I wanted to see how much they were sending the car. I didn't have the money at the time. So I went to the place and I saw nice cars. And so while we were still negotiating the car, the man said, ah, Pastor, I beg, it's our prayer time. Can you wait? He brought soya and drinks. Said, please just wait. He was going to pray. He didn't mind how much I was going to pay for that car. There are those who are not here now because on a public holiday like this, they said they didn't get permission from office. And then a man left millions to go and pray. Let me say this to you. I want you to be very clear. This is the good life nation. Listen carefully. Listen. No, you didn't know what I want to say. <laughs> I want to pass an instruction here. In this place, if you will not do it the way I teach you, you should get out. I'm, and if you don't get out... Just to stay your way, and let me say, you will die. Because this is the last place anybody will insult the integrity of God. If you come here to insult God's integrity, I tell you what, I will curse you and your generation, you will die. Because here, God must be honored in his absoluteness as sovereign God. If you are here, because I hear reports of some of you in your royal chapters, I'm warning you for the last time. Otherwise, what will happen to you will be terrible. You can come here and you can go somewhere else and, and abuse God. But if you come here, you must comply. You must make up your mind that whatever we ask you to do, you will do it. It's not up to you. And you know why I can talk to you this way? Because I don't depend on you for anything. It's only in churches where the man of God depends on, on members to, to eat and feed that he, he doesn't say the truth. He says, uh, uh, it's not right to disobey God. Let's try and serve God well. Why? Because if he talks to me, I'll just stop paying tight. <laughs> you see that? They stop paying tight. But thank God, my life is different. So what I'm trying to say to you is that, will we serve the Lord here into the way God should be served? There will be no deviation. If you don't like it, I give you the opportunity to go somewhere where you can be rebellious and useless. If you want to be useful to God, come and stay here and be ready to learn, obey, and comply. And you'll be shocked how your life will move from glory to glory. Amen. Amen. That's all. Listen, it's easier to obey than to disobey. I told you that. You need a lot of planning to disobey. <laughs> Very easy to obey. No struggles. Amen. No struggles. Just obey. Just obey God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity to give, to create a new season, and to explode financially. We give with humility. We give with thanksgiving. We give with faith in our hearts, our offerings, our tithes, our first fruits, our special seeds. Lord, we are not dashing you. We are giving with expectations in our hearts. And Father, we give to return back with harvests. And we ask that the anointing of God's be that, that was upon the rod of Aaron that, that caused it to burn and to blossom, to bear fruit in less than before us. Rest on all that we offer. And let there be such an outburst in miracles in our lives. Let our lives testify of who you are. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.
I want to mean this prayer. Just say with me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe all of the claims of your word. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus Christ was offered for my offenses. He died and was raised again to life for my justification. Today, I declare Jesus Christ is Lord. And I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith in you and in your word, I receive the remission for all my sins. I receive eternal life for my spirit. I declare this day I am born again. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I declare God as my Father. Father God, I thank you. And I ask you to come place your seal of ownership over me. I ask for the Holy Spirit of promise. And in Jesus' name, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Thank you, my Father. Today, I become a citizen of heaven and a member of the family of God. Father, come take your place in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, if you prayed that prayer, I just want you to, re- to, to open up yourself right now for the Holy Spirit to do a work in your life. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. For the rest of you in the meeting, I want you to join me to speak in other tongues for 60 seconds for those that have just received the Holy Spirit. And those that have just received the Holy Spirit right now, open your mouth and pray because you have just been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray right now. Go ahead. Come and take your place, O Lord. Hey, Lord, go say, the rest of the speak in other tongues. Come and take your place, O oh Lord, in my life. Come and take glory to God, your place. Yes, Lord. In my life. Come and take your place.